welcome back to Nugget Garage. Uh, it's my week this week to work on the Supra. Kind of cheated a little bit during the week anyway and kept tinkering away on this on the side. I've uh, got it to the point where the whole engine's bolted together, it's got spark plugs in it, it's got coil leads on it, distributors. Uh, we test fitted the Toyota Sora HPC coated headers and they fit really good. Just got to move the fuel filter. It's a little bit close to the bottom of the collector. Um, I still got to order some Sora radiator lines. This radiator is a Sora radiator. We, for some reason, cut the filler neck off it. I think it had bonnet clearance issue problems. So I'm going to have to put an inline filler in the radiator. Um, I've ordered some Sora intermediate AC lines. I've got a feeling that it should bolt in. The Sora is very similar to the Supra, so I'm going to try that first before I cut and shut. Same with the power steer lines, I've got a Sora power steer line, I'm going to try the hard line sort of, for some reason, loops around a fair bit under there, but if it fits, it fits. I'll make it work. And then shorten the low pressure side. Now I've decided I'm going to use a CDI system on the factory coils. I'm trying to keep the, I'm going to try and use, make use of the quick coil charge time. CDI basically doesn't have a coil charge time, so I should be able to still do a lot of RPM and not have to worry about, say, a smart coil that needs eight milliseconds of well to charge. Uh, I've gone and modified all the inlet manifold, filled up all the holes I didn't need, uh, put a two wire idle control valve on it. Um, at that point in time I was actually going to use the Haltech Elite 950 on it but I started looking at what it can and can't do and now I'm starting to think I might even use an Autronic on it uh, unless I can somehow figure out a way of getting a, an Elite 2500 or something that's going to let me do a bit more of what I need to do. I want to do like bump and creep and a little bit more ins and outs than what the Net 950 can do. Anyway, so this week I'm planning on pulling the fuel tank out. We're going to try and flat floor it. I've got a fuel cell turning up and we'll start looking at where the turbo is going to sit and how we're going to get lines to and from it. The, the aluminium charge pipe I think is going to have to be oval. It's going to have to be on the outside of the chassis rail. So I'm going to have to get some inch and three quarter pipe or something and cut it down the guts and uh, weld plates in and make it into a inch and three quarter high oval pipe so it's not dragging on the ground. Anyway, so we'll get it up, get the fuel tank out and then have a look what room we've got. What do you reckon this is going to look like in here? Saturday 85 sitting here for like the last year. Ooh, that's it. Mm. Ooh, it's gonna be nice. Oh, it smells good. Ooh, I don't want to know what's going on there. I do know what's going on there. <sighs> That's why my pumps worked. chores did you have to do today to get out? Only a couple. I had to do hardware, food shopping, fix, food up, shopping. fix oh. up the rolls on the screen door, cut down a passion fruit bush, mow the backyard. Just so I can come down here to make content for the YouTubes. For the peoples. I'm sure they appreciate it. And my, my lawn is it should be an Olympic extreme sport. It's sketchy. Come on, can't be that bad. It's a lawn. It's like, it's like a between the, the lawnmower threatening to throw the f***ing blade disc at you. Matchbox cars and shit buried in the grass. The rocks and sticks. And then the Labrador shits. Oh. You basically just go in thongs and shorts and just freaking go. And you have a beer at the end, not because you're tired, because you're trying to get your heart rate back down from the <laughs> adrenaline. <laughs> That's been sitting in there for a year. That looks in, pretty good. What's that hanging? Back, back in the day, there were, this used to be like, I think Titan used to sell them for about 1200 bucks, and this was a China ripoff of it. Uh -huh. It's like 280 bucks. Triple pump hanger. So on the new setup, we're going to use the Aeroflow fuel cell that has a billet two pump hanger in it and I'm going to use two 525 wool bros. Because it's a big fuel cell you've got coming in it. Yeah I'm going to cut this out 
Don't kill me. I'll make it so I can weld it back in. No, I won't. <laughs> that will give me a flat area for a cell about this high, and then hopefully it'll give us all the room underneath we need to do turbos and oil containers and exhausty things. Well, technically you can't have it in the back because it's not got a firewall, but it was already in the back anyway. Well, Lord. there's a cover that goes over that, so... Yeah, but and then that's a plastic fuel cell, and then we've got a steel outer, and an outer, I don't know. I could make a board to go over it. I don't care anyway. I'm old. If they pull me up, they'll let me go. <laughs> you keep telling yourself that. <laughs> That's a pretty bold number plate this day and age, mate. Max Pussy. <laughs> I got them off a mate of mine who used to be cool and had a VL. So back when we were younger, he used to call me Max SMS. And then he started to try and get a woman, so he went to the gym and we called him Maximus. And then he got a woman and we started calling him Max, Max Pussy. Now he's Max nothing. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's Max Pushboy. <laughs> he's Max Pushboy. <laughs> Maximus. Still doesn't change the, fa change the fact that it's not going to be max PSI. Uh, well, maybe the max PSI is what it can run, because it's that f***ing laggy. <laughs> Ordinary laggy. Maybe max PSI is like six and a half at 8,000. <laughs> still max, it's still <laughs> max PSI. It's a statement. I think there's going to be a shit ton of room on there, eh? An ordinary ton of room. What kind of measurement is that? Ordinary. Like a shit ton. Like, what's the equivalent of, like, say, two shit tons? Well, it's... It's, a sh it's like a shit ton and another shit ton next to it. It's two shit tons. <laughs> so it's an area volume, not a... It's just a unit of measurement. If we all use that, that measurement, then it means something. Like horsepower. Horse spurs. Horse per. You reckon I should probably put a second diff bush in it now too? I probably would. Do that when you change your diff then. It's from it a less killy one. It was a bit sketchy. A, a bit. <laughs> You know, I guess you drove it more than I did. <laughs> Sketchy as hell. It's like broken all the time. Oh. Oh. Rock collection, bro. Oh, that's heavy. That feels heavy. How much fuel is in this damn thing, man? Oh, I'm a bit of a ball loss, that's probably full. Please help. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of weight now. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, look at the room for activities. I've even got to fit a muffler and everything. Two GD4788s. Two of them? Yeah. <laughs> Dewalt got his own back. Lots of fuel in that It's fine. Well, the turbo can go this way, like, it can be fed up and sit across here. Remember, I've got to have an oil tank under it, because that system is going to be completely standalone. But we've got, to, we've got to have the turbo high enough that we can have the, you know, at least a three litre vessel underneath it. And I've just got to incorporate like a little bumper holder thing. Make a little box here for the air filter, so they have an exhaust and intakey. Come on, detonation dog. Show us your junk, bro. So, obviously, it's not ideal. It's very big, it's old. I swapped a Precision 68 mil for it, so it might not even friggin' work, it feels alright. But it's a journal bearing 4788. They normally have a T6 rear housing on them, but this has actually got a modified Scania T4 split pulse. I think it used to stall up on an RB30. So, we've got a 4 litre engine, even though the turbo's 3.5 metres back from the engine. Most people tell me that you've got to have you know, on an LS style motor, say no more than a three inch feed pipe between the engine and the turbo, single. Um, so we're going to try and do twin two inch, which I think works out about the same as two and three quarter, as far as volume goes. 
Um, I really, really can't get my head around running something that small for a thousand horsepower, but apparently that's what you got to do. And you, you go and split. Pulse yeah, we're going to do twin, twin two inch, and we're going to try and use the split pulse to try and spill is it that up. Heavy. It is heavy. So up the front here, these are those Toyota Sora or SC400 headers that Hurricane make. They're pretty much bang on. Um, we've had the power glide up there, everything fits. Uh, we may have to shorten the lever a little bit to try and get it to clear here, but other than that, it's fine. So what the idea is, we're going to do a single or twin two inch feed pipes to the back to try and take a, yeah, use of the, the split pulse effect. But in my mind, I want to try and get some exhaust volume back when it starts making some power. So I can't see why we can't put the waste gates at the front, put the turbo at the back. So we'll, we'll come out of here where it's, you know, at two and a half inch turn, get into some gates and then continue on as twin twos and then merge these two into a common hot dog in the middle. So when the thing's on, on line and it's on boost, we should get some flow back through the waste up waste gates. And keeping it two and separate, it'll maintain the split pulse all the way to the, to the so, scroll. So the waste gates into a single pipe? Yeah, but that's purely because I'll have, I don't really want it to sound like a cackly V8 with an unmerged, you know, bank to bank when the gates are open. And I've got this nice pocket in the middle here where it's gonna have a heap of room, so. So it'll go twin two inch in the middle Twin gates in the middle to a two and a half inch hot dog. That's my plan. Screamer dog. Screamer dog. Peyton Pendy. Pretty much done on every car I've ever owned. <laughs> Screamer dogs are awesome. They do. I don't like stuff loud. It's the problem. So also platinum racing products. We got one of these off Golby. Well, actually Golby gave it to me because he's a nice, <laughs> nice ordinary person. Basically it lets you put a 1350 uni, uh, uni onto the RZ diff tripod. So basically all we're gonna have is one piece tail shaft, strange yoke, one piece tail shaft, 1350 yoke at the bottom, back and then we're done. Or it'll vibrate or something will happen. And maybe that other diff will show. Yeah. So even though this car's always run 980s, it's always been a really hairy car to drive. We don't know whether it's the Taurus and LSD trying to kill you, or whether it's the fact that I've only got one bush in it and stuff's moving around, but. Either way, it's sketchy. Eh? We should probably put a, another bush in it. I'm going to leave it all rubberized. I don't. I don't like noisy, vibrating crap. So the Torsen, you can weld them up, but it's bloody chunky and it's heavy. So if we go that route, we'll probably just put a. We'll get a different open diff and then put a full spool or something in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably a bit safer. It's weird. It's like it drives. It will power skid and then. If one wheel goes over a bump or something, it drives the wheel on the ground hard and you just, you can't keep it in your lane. It's, yeah, it's it deadly. It's the only car I've ever had that's crossed the, the, the lane at the drags on the finish line. There's a fair bit of room, but this is a pretty big turbo. I've made a habit over the years of <coughs> going way too big in the turbo department. Maybe I'm compensating for something. <laughs> well, I reckon it'll be like that. Probably like that. About there? Because that'll give me enough height, I think, to get the decent enough oil drain tank on it. I could actually even run the. I could even run it in the centre. Because there's nothing that says I can't run the exhaust up this side, and then the inlet back down that side. So I reckon we'll go in the middle. So the compressor line can go that side, and then the two two inches can come up this side. So another thing is that thing's freaking heavy. So I'm going to have to build like a. I might call it like a turbo module, I guess. We'll build it all on a frame. we we'll make it so it bolts up to here or something. And then I can incorporate the bumper bracket back into the frame so it's all back to how it was. You'll just need two people to put it in. Another thing you've got to consider as well is the turbo is all going to be mounted statically, so it's not going to move. But that much pipe under pressure and heat is going to expand. So yeah. it's going to need flexes so in flex each joint. two inch. And I'm going to try and get those bellows that don't have the weave in it. So we don't end up with a weave all through the turbo. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> that is trying to suck. And the other thing that you've got to consider as well is my Mac valve is going to have to be obviously where the wastegates is, but the wide band really shouldn't be in the front pipes. It's going to have to be back here as well in the dump pipe. Yeah, because wasn't that an issue? Otherwise it melts it. 
like well, yeah, I'd say so. know, melt the hell out of it with yeah. all the heat because that half the trick is keeping the heat in, in the pot. Yeah. And the other interesting thing we're going to be up against is <clears throat> I wanted to go at least three inch on the compressor side pipe going back to the engine. Yep. It's going to have to go obviously under here fine in three inch but as it's going to have to be on the outside of the rail. So we've only really probably got inch and three quarter of height before it becomes a massive ground clearance problem. So I reckon I'll get some inch and three quarter pipe, cut it down the guts, buy some aluminium strip and we'll make a big wide aluminium oval tube and then come back to three inch up here and then sneak back over the rail. Nothing looks like a, it's, it's impossible so far. So. The flat floor thing, kind of hesitant to cut it up but you can see how much better it will be if that's not there. It's only a super. So it's going. That seems pretty easy, eh? What could possibly go wrong? Alright, so I've knocked up some RHS contraption thingy. This is one half of what the turbo race is going to look like. It needs to triangulate further back and tie into some back points. Also got to make a piece that holds this down so I can fit a muffler in here. Um, when I was doing a mock-up before I held the turbo up there and the actual position looked pretty basic so I've just welded a plate to the flange, tied that to that and now I want to bolt it up and just make sure the turbo position is correct and figure out where I can get some extra bracing. So we'll do that. So I think maybe we'll um, get this jig ceramic coated. What do you reckon? I don't know how it's going to handle the heat. Yeah, I ordered a heap of um, Haltec stuff too to make that 950 work. So you're going to stick with the 950 now? Yeah, I'm going to put an IO expander on it. Um, Scott from Next Level took me up, getting an IC7 dash. Oh, cool. I'm going to put as many sensors on it as I can. Pressure sensors, temperature sensors. I want to monitor and log and react to this standalone oil pressure system. Because if it stops, the turbo is going to die. Yeah, okay. You I also thought about maybe using um, PWM to control the pump speed instead of using a regulator, but I think I'm just starting to get too complicated for the sake no. of being complicated. <laughs> we'll just let the pump be noisy. And Al will be happy to know that I just bought two China pumps instead of the stupid EXA pump. Uh, is that what he was talking about? Yeah. They're all the same. They're just multiplied in prices <laughs> and rebranded from what I can tell. Turbo's all rotating. That's cool. Plenty of room. Just a little bit. I think I'll try and get that up to through the but when the floor is flat. Really needed to have the turbo in position because I've got to put another bar across here. And I need to know where I can actually cross over without getting in the road of myself. So what's the plan with the muffler? So Show you the peoples. This back piece here, I've got to make a bit to hold this down where it originally was on the fuel tank. And then a Hurricane 4 inch muffler should fit in that area, it'll be tight. And we'll just do a 180 through here, 4 inch. And then out. And then back out through here. And then I think we'll make a pod filter place here and just sort of make a shield to rubber and shit doesn't go all over it. Mostly rubber. You're not worried about the dirt or the water. Not it's when I'm driving it. Went, for when you're driving it, it'll be rubber and shit. Obviously, we're going to make the probably three litre odd. We're going to have a gravity fed oil tank. Um, and then we're going to use a China gear pump to pump pressure back up into the turbo. And we're going to use a Turbo Smart oil pressure regulator. And then the relief off it, I'm going to send them through a trans cooler over here to cool the turbo oil and then we'll have all the sensors in there so we can monitor it and make sure it's all still happy. But I'm happy with that. There's that's pretty cool. There's more room than what I thought. There's heaps of room in there. Considering that's a GD forty seven. Yeah. Yeah this will sneak under there. We'll have twin two inch pipes come up into here. I can't triangulate to this because it's rubber mounted. I think you pointed that out. Yeah. Just a truck driver, eh? Just a truck driver. I'm not even a truck driver anymore. I'm just a nothing. Office pitch. Settle down.
Actually, no, you don't even actually get paid, so you're not even employed, really. You're a doll bludger. I'm not even on the doll. All right, so that's the end of my week on the Supra. Um, did four early morning starts. Got about 20 hours in this exhaust. Um, probably isn't a 20 hour job, but it was multiple hours of thinking where everything's gonna fit and what other stuff has to fit around it. Um, it's mostly done, I've gotta finish weld a few spots, 
I've got to finish well the gate merge, put the screamer dog in. Uh, we've got to pull it all back apart and wrap it, clean all the insides out because unlike normal exhaust, all of this has to flow through the turbo. So any crap that's in there is going to destroy wheels and whatnot. Uh, these wastegates, they're tile-ish wastegates. They're about one quarter of the cost of genuine ones. I've used these before, they've been all right in the past. These ones, though, I've seen a little bit of swarf and filings and crap in the ports, so I'm going to have to pull them apart and inspect, or I might hit Golby's up or something and put some Turbo Smart ones on there. Apparently they've got a one Turbo Smart that's got the same flange locations, so it might be a swap over. They've got a smaller body as well, so it should be more room. Uh, we've got the turbo bracket made. It actually turned out exactly how I anticipated it would. Um, ended up using a sandwich plate for the exhaust feed because I was worried that, well, originally I was going to weld pipes straight to the actual bracket itself and it would have been too cumbersome to move it in and out. Uh, the stuff for the, my parts haven't really shown up. There's probably COVID border restrictions, but my fuel tank didn't show up, so I didn't do the flat floor thing yet. Uh, my 525 pumps are here. I finally got flanges and a muffler to do the post-turbo exhaust, which we'll do next time. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. It looks pretty wild under here. Um, yeah, glad, up. hey? And it winds over. It does, it winds over. Uh, I've got all the actual wiring stuff turning up this week too, and ECUs and IO expanders and all that sort of junk. Um, but next week we'll get into Chris's VL same sort of deal, we've got to do the Link Fury install. Uh, we'll try and get that maybe running next week. I don't know. Stop it. Should be, should be possible in a week. We'll just make it start and do something. Ooh. Anyway, if you like this video, give us a like and a subscribe. It's still growing, we're getting up around 30,000. 30, uh, 28, close to 30. Yeah, so it helps us out. All right, we'll see you in the next one. All the other YouTube channels have Labradors. Yes, golden retrievers. No stupid fucking shall pay backwards looking motherfucker dogs. Dog? With attitude problems. He doesn't have an attitude problem. I am a person that loves he dogs. Doesn't like I'm a dog lover. Your dog's a cunt. He's not. He fucking is, mate. Um, just stay there for a bit, eh? Where, where are you going now? <laughs> Should we put the um, air filter out the exhaust? Like zoomies. <laughs> should be, I should better make the air filter come, come down <laughs> here or something. Fucking hey? retard. How could you get butthurt over that being there? Yes. Can I put it down now? No. No, oh. just hold it for just a little bit. I just want to get another shot. <clears throat> I know it'll come out of there. Because the camera's on. Oh yeah. Look at it. Just look at it. It's fantastic. Would you look at it?